In this session is a continuation of the session that I have taken regarding cyst of the maxillofacial region. Now in this session I'm going to talk about treatment of the cyst in the maxillofacial region. Now why do we need to treat a cyst? We need to treat cystic lesions because they increase in size and produce facial disfigurement. They tend to get infected again and again and create a lot of problem. They weaken the jaw and result in pathological fractures. They prevent eruption of teeth. They also undergo neoplastic changes. So these are the five main reasons why we need to treat a cystic lesion. So the treatment of cystic lesion can be divided into decompression, marsupialization and enucleation. Decompression is a more conservative approach. It is of two types, PASH1, PASH2 and PASH2 is also termed as Waldron's method. Enucleation could be done either as enucleation and packing. Enucleation with primary closure, enucleation with primary closure, and reconstruction with bone graft. Let's start with marsupialization or decompression. Now, the principle of marsupialization is nothing but creating a surgical window in the wall of the cyst to evacuate the cystic content. Now, this decreases the intracystic pressure and promotes shrinkage of the cyst and eventual bone fill. Now this term marsupialization is evolved from marsupials, for example kangaroos. They keep their baby in a pouch. So in the similarly, we create a pouch in the oral cavity so that the cystic content is extravated or it is removed out and we eventually let granulation to take place, bone fill to take place, the size will eventually shrink. Alright, but what are the indication of these marsupialization? First is the age. In case of a younger children or you can say younger age group and children wherein there is a large cystic lesions and that it is associated with tooth buds. So you do not want to enucleate and cause injury to the tooth bud. In that case you will do marsupialization wherein eventual healing will take place and the bone will heal without affecting the tooth bud. And you want to retain the tooth because in enucleation what happens you tend to remove the tooth also associated with it. Okay, when the proximity of the cyst is towards vital structures like when the cyst is large and it is encroaching into the inferior alveolar nerve, into the maxillary sinus. So when you want to prevent these structures, you will do a marsupialization. In case you want the tooth to erupt into the oral cavity, in that case you will do marsupialization. As I mentioned earlier, in case of a very large cyst, wherein a number of root apices are involved, you could not do epistectomy in root canal of all the teeth and make them unnecessarily non-vital. In that case, try to do marsupialization. Then when you need to preserve the vitality of the teeth, in that case, do marsupialization. In case of large lesions also, what happened? No, the bone become thin and it become very the inferior border becomes thinned down. So pathological fracture can take place if you enucleate. So you will do a marsupialization rather than that and eventually you will allow the bone to heal by secondary intention. Now the techniques of marsupialization. Okay, how will you do marsupialization? You, wherein the cystic lesion is there, you will see how long or small the cystic lesion is and accordingly you will make a vestibular incision or you can make a you can make a semicircular or U-shaped incision. Okay, raised or sometime you could also use a cravicular incision and give a releasing incision, either anteriorly or a posterior releasing incision. Raised a complete mucoperiosteal flap. Once you have raised a mucoperiosteal flap, make burr holes, create a window with a round burr and then with a straight burr, connect these round burr and create a window. Remove the bony window. Uh, the width should be around you can say three centimeters so that your two fingers can go inside all right so you create the window remove the window evacuate the cystic content once you have evacuated the cystic content now suture the mucosal lining with the inner lining of the cystic lesion in this way you're creating a pouch or a communication between the cyst and the oral cavity so this will eventually shrink in size and below that bone will form this is how you do a marsupialization. Now after you have created the, an opening, now you cannot keep it open like that. You have to fill with something. So you will put some medication, either impregnated medicated gauze with vitinal varnish or a sofra tube inside these cavity. 
and you have to alternately like every two days you have to change the dressing irrigate the cavity then again put a fresh dressing it's a very cumbersome procedure okay now the advantage of this technique it is a simple procedure you can use in case of a large cyst you can do under local anesthesia general anesthesia is not required okay this preserve the vital structure it allow eruption of the displaced teeth into the oral cavity prevents pathological fracture and allow endosteal bone formation to take place but the disadvantage with this is that you are leaving behind the pathologic tissue that is the cystic lining is still remain inside you're leaving the pathologic tissue inside there is prolonged healing time because since secondary intention take place endosteal bone formation take place the healing time is increased there is eventual reduction in the size of the cavity but this reduction is not equal everywhere sometimes it will reduce more at some places it will it will remain the same so there is uneven reduction of the cavity then it is very inconvenient for the patient so it is uh, the patient compliance is also important most of the time the patient will not comply because you have to every alternate day you have to change the dressing you cannot call the patient to your clinic and change the dressing obviously if the patient comes you can do it but you have to teach the patient the patient can do it at home easily but it's very cumbersome you need to have patient compliance in that then eventually though you try to keep it clean there is an opening some amount of saliva or food debris will definitely go inside and accumulate which will again cause bad odor and may result in further infection now secondary surgery is always required after this you have to do an enucleation after so to overcome the disadvantage of this PASH technique or PASH 1 technique, Waldron gave a modification termed as PASH 2 technique. It's a two-stage technique, wherein the first stage you do marsupialization. So once the size of the cavity is decreased, then at the later stage you could do enucleation and remove the entire pathologic lining and do a primary closure. Okay, now let's move on to enucleation. Enucleation has its own advantages. Okay, there is primary closure of the wound is possible in case of enucleation. The healing is rapid because of that. Post-operative care is reduced. Thorough examination of entire cystic lining can be done. But at the same time, it has certain disadvantage. The impacted teeth associated with the cyst, you have to extract it. Then removal of the cyst may weaken the body of the mandible can result in pathological fracture. It may damage the adjacent vital structures like inferior alveolar nerve, maxillary sinus. It may also affect the vitality of the tooth. Then, let's move on to the surgical procedure of enucleation and packing. Now, this technique is used in case of a smaller cystic lesion where primary closure, small infected cyst, where primary closure would be unsuccessful leading to wound breakdown or wound or wound edge dehiscence can take place if it is an infected lesion. Okay, so what you will do is you will enucleate the cyst and pack it like in case of marsupialization. Okay, you will do entire enucleation and then pack it. Now here the wound healed by granulation tissue and eventual epithelization can take place. Now the next thing is enucleation with primary closure. Now in this slide you see an impacted third molar associated with a cystic lesion, radiolucency. The radiolucency is very extensive involving the angle of the mandible and also including the ramus of the mandible. So in this case, clinically, you will give an inc cravicular incision. From starting from the first premolar, you will give an anterior releasing incision or if you want to avoid the anterior releasing incision, you will extend the cravicular incision distal to the second molar and give a releasing incision on the anterior border of the ramus. Here, root pieces are also present. So you will remove all the root pieces that are present. Once you have removed the root piece, you will do a complete mucoperiosteal elevation. As you can see in the figure. Once you have done the mucoperiosteal elevation, create a bony window, evacuate the cystic content. Rather than doing that, try to remove the entire cystic lining in total. Sometimes it is very thin and fragile, it might break. But you always make an attempt to remove the entire cystic lining in total. As you can already see in the photograph, do a thorough curettage because you do not want any remnant of the cyst to leave behind because this can eventually result in recurrence and we do not want recurrence. The next is enucleation and primary closure which Madan and resection. Now in case the cyst is very large and have a high rate of recurrence, 
then along with enucleation, you have to remove a 3 mm margin of normal bone. Okay, to remove is removed along with the cystic lesion to, pre to prevent recurrence. As I mentioned earlier in my previous lecture, recurrence can be because of thin cystic lining, satellite cyst and proliferative potential of the cystic lining. So sometime these cystic lining may have projections inside the bone. So in those cases which have a high recurrence rate, you have to remove the next anatomical barrier. Or in those cystic lesions which have perforated the cortical plane, plate, marks always state that when a cystic lesion or a tumor lesion affect a level of the anatomical barrier, the next level of anatomical barrier has to be removed. So when the cystic lesion is confined in the cancellous bone, you remove around 2 mm of the normal bone along with it. If it has perforated the cortical plate, you remove the cortical plate along with the periosteum associated with it. That is the next anatomical barrier is also removed. When periosteum is affected, then you remove some amount of muscle also. Then, let's move on to enucleation and primary closure with segmental resection. Now, segmental resection is done in those cystic lesions that are large enough and have caused perforation and destroy the cortical plate as well as the inferior border. So that it is very difficult to maintain the continuity of the inferior border. The inferior border is so thin that, that pathological fracture will result. So you have to, there is no point in keeping that inferior border. Rather you do a segmental resection, remove the lesion and put a reconstruction plate. And sometime if, the, if you find that if the cyst has a less amount of recurrence rate, you could either do a primary grafting with either iliac crest graft or the rib graft. You use it in between it, segment it with a reconstruction plate. With this, I would like to conclude the treatment plan is that that factors that take into consideration when you are treating a cystic lesion is the size of the cystic lesion. The proximity to vital structures, the age of the patient, its recurrent rate. And then you plan the treatment, whether it is conservative or you have to go for a radical treatment approach. Whatever is the treatment plan, always keep in mind long-term follow-up is very important. Around at least minimum 5 to 8 years of follow-up is a must. That's it. Thank you.